and uh, I'm going to just uh, make a few opening comments, and then I'm going to ask Dave to to add to that or um, add what he he likes, and then I will, um, with the Lord's help, try and give a little outline of um, prayer, what it is, and uh, the immense privilege it is for us as believers. Um, last year in July. Um, Dave contacted me and uh, he was res responsible to give a series of meetings to our brethren in Brazil and he was going to take up this subject and so he went ahead and took up uh, one meeting and then he called me and asked me if I would be willing to to help him um, just to have two to share together and I know it's uh, it's maybe a little different than we've done on this particular <clears throat> uh, format, but uh, certainly we have a scriptural warrant for uh, things being established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And uh, if two of you agree on earth is touching anything, it shall be done of them of my father, which is in heaven. So we have, certainly we have um, grounds, don't we, to bring in more than one. And so we hope that, uh, doing it this way uh, will maybe give you a little more rounded um, overview of prayer. And there's things that um, I don't think about that come to Dave's mind and vice versa. And so um, it was a real encouragement to my own heart to, to be involved with him when we took it up in Brazil and our brother Paul was involved in that and some of the translation and all. So it, um, uh, hopefully, uh, he'll feel free to maybe add some input too. So, and others as well. I, you know, in in one sense, um, I look at some of those that are are on right now, and I'm thinking, um, as Dave mentioned to me too, we should be sitting down, and they should be talking to us. I think of our brother Poole and um, his dear wife too, and certainly they've been down the pathway much further than we have. And I'm sure there's lots that we could learn from our brother. And if we were talking with our sister too, I'm sure she could share uh, what, you know, some, some aspects of prayer that maybe we, you and I haven't um, had the experience of having not been down the road as far. And I know too, that there are, are those here online that are joining in this morning that have, um, been through some heavy trials and maybe are currently in a trial that we're unaware of. And certainly uh, we know that in such times like that, such a thing as prayer can really be impressed upon our souls. And so uh, it really is a, a wonderful privilege. Um, I just, uh, I'm reminded of, as we take up this story, Dave and I just, you know, we just kind of felt a little overwhelmed at taking up such a subject. And uh, we felt that way back in July and it, it, the feeling hasn't changed. And it reminds me of uh, that uh, happy little story about the, the little boy that was on the beach and he was playing in the sand. He had his little plastic bucket with him and he goes and he, he dips that little bucket in the surface that's coming in on the beach. and. He's so delighted with his bucket full of water and he runs to his mommy and he says, mommy, I've got the ocean in my bucket. <laughs> I think Dave and I feel a little like that, that we're just, uh, we're just gonna give you uh, maybe two bucketfuls of, of uh, concerning this subject and, and you all have a bucket too. And uh, I know you could, could share with us. So um, I'm hoping that in our, our time that follows, as we typically do, that there will be liberty uh, to, to sh for some of you to share with us as well. And um, so we, we want to tell you up front that we don't feel like we have the answers. Like I said, we feel like uh, at best we're, we're weak vessels. We're just uh, uh, conduits, if you will, to, to try and bring to you something that we've, we've gleaned from from the word of God concerning this subject. And it seems like whenever you take up something, even though, you know, all of our lives, certainly Dave's and mine as growing up in the assemblies that we were in, 
we've heard about prayer all our lives. It's just been a um, an everyday thing in our lives, you know, praying for meals, giving thanks for meals, dealing in prayer with our parents, those kind of things. So you kind of come to take it for granted. But every time you take up a subject like this, um, it just seems like there's fresh things that come out of it and uh, a challenge that results from, from taking it up. So before I get into uh, kind of giving a little outline of what prayer is, at this point, I'd like to, to just pause and, and mute myself and let Dave um, add to that as he desires. So I'll do that. I don't have very much to add other than the realization that it is a hu humongous subject. Um, when I was a teenager, I lived in Montreal and we, uh, we shut down the Sunday school for two months every year because there were Sunday schools elsewhere. But for the time that we had our, our Sunday school time, uh, was about 40 weeks uh, every year. And um, when the year started, when I was, I guess I was 17, the brother that was uh, uh, taking, um, taking our young people's class, he said, well, we're going to take up the subject of prayer. And we kind of looked at him with, uh, I think, mild interest as to um, a subject like that. When I was 17, I thought, oh, well, you know what, um, hopefully we can get on to something else too. And um, so we were sort of interested to know what else he was going to take up that year. And he said, oh, no, we're just going to take up the subject of prayer. And so we went through 40 sessions. Um, it was, uh, I thought, how are we going to take up a, a subject like this all year? Well, uh, I dare say that he didn't get done. And so there are so many different aspects of prayer. Um, and of course, we're not going to deal with all them as we go through this time. But uh, if we could just maybe make a comment that our, our prayer life is, is different than our reading life. Both are very, very uh, necessary in our life. But um, our, if I could maybe express our, um, our prayer life in this way with the Lord, that if you remember when the Lord uh, selected his disciples, in the, um, it's in Mark chapter three, and you can look that up um, at your leisure. But when he selected his disciples, he said he, uh, actually I'm gonna turn to it in um, Mark chapter three. Uh, sorry for not being prepared like this. Okay, in Mark chapter three, we have in verse 14, it says he ordained 12 that they should be with him. He ordained 12 that they should be with him. And that is the primary reason for him choosing the disciples. He wanted their company. And it's not different with ourselves. Our, our reading pattern, you know, we get up in the morning perhaps, or we all have a reading pattern where, where we read maybe once in a day or twice in a day or a few times in a day. But our, our prayer life is not to be that way. Our prayer life is, is such that the Lord desires to have our company continually. And to, to view this subject in a mechanical way, like we pray at this time or we pray at that time or we pray another time, is, is not really the thought that the Lord has for us in his desire to have our company. You know, he, had, he, had, he wanted the company of uh, Adam and Eve in the garden. He wanted the, the company of the people of God in the, in, uh, when the tabernacle was built as they were going through the wilderness. And we, can, we could look at various different times when the, um, the Lord desired um, the, the company of his people. And it, it's, it's very much the same with ourselves. And uh, as, as we view this subject, um, as John said, we trust that it'll be, uh, it'll become, um, if it's not already, a very integral part um, of our life and our, our, our fellowship with the Lord on a continual basis. Well, John, why don't you go ahead with your, um, your, your introduction there. 
Yeah, thank you very much for that, Dave. Um, I appreciated that. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I thought in in response to this this question, what is prayer? Where to even start? But um, I feel like it just came before me, and I want to start with you know we often when we pray or when we talk about prayer, we often think of ourselves and uh, the benefit that we receive and so on, and and. Uh, that's not necessarily wrong. I don't mean to imply that. But I just got to thinking about God's side. What does it mean to him? I want to start out with that. So um, in answer to that, that question, I want to begin with what prayer is to God. And I think we have a, a good verse for that. And I'm going to just give the reference and then read it. You don't need to turn to it. But I think we'll see from this verse that what it is to God is incense, and it's for him. It's incense that, that he is for his benefit. And, you know, he delights to hear us pray, and he encourages it throughout his word. We're going to see that as we progress in this subject. But in Revelation 5 and verse 8, it says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, or in another translation, incenses, which are the prayers of saints. So I think we see from that verse that um, when you pray, it ascends to heaven as a sweet odor, as an incense to God. And so I, I just wanted to begin with his portion what it means to him. And you know, uh, <clears throat> one of our good uh, English poets, um, Mary Bowley, uh, wrote so many hymns, um, puts it so well, and I'm gonna just read, this is a hymn that uh, we often sing on Lord's Day morning in our Little Flock hymn book. In fact, this dear sister, um, she only lived to be 43 years old. She was widowed at the age of 21. So she was only married for about four years when the Lord took her husband. So she went through a lot, but the beauty that was brought out of her trials that we see in her hymns is, is really heart, uh, heartening to us. And so in 114, that hymn 114 in the Little Flock, the second verse goes like this. Much incense is ascending before the eternal throne. God graciously is bending to hear each feeble groan. To all our prayers and praises, Christ adds a sweet perfume and love the censer raises these odors to consume. Beautiful thoughts from this, this dear woman um, and for us and what an encouragement they are. And, and just I just like the way she puts it there that God is graciously bending to hear each feeble groan. Maybe sometimes <clears throat> all we can feel like saying is or doing is groaning. He hears that. That's incense to him. And so um, just to begin with that, that prayer is incense to the Father and to the Son. It also is communion, <clears throat> which uh, has the thought of fellowship. Um, being in agreement. And so uh, what an uh, important thing that is, aspect of what prayer is, it's, it's communion with, with the Father and with his Son. So we have in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 3, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and then uh, in 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 9, it says, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So we have a Father in the glory that delights to commune with us. And, <clears throat> and so prayer is, is a way in which we can commune with God. We can be in fellowship together. It's a, a sweet thought. And then it's also um, a means of communicating with the Father and with his Son. 
um, <clears throat> and being able to express our, our thoughts, our hearts to him. And we might ask the question, well, doesn't he know our thoughts already? It says in Psalm 139 in verse 2, the psalmist says, Thou knowest my thought, my downsittings, and mine uprising. Thou understandeth my thought afar off. So we might say, well, doesn't God already understand all our thoughts? Doesn't he know them? He's uh, all-knowing. Um, does he does he need do we need to pray if he knows our thoughts well <clears throat> he does know our thoughts he certainly does but he wants to hear our voices he wants to hear us uh, you might say the voice of our heart expressed to him <clears throat> and i think uh, solomon puts that beautifully in the song of solomon in chapter 2 and verse 14 it says <clears throat> oh, my dove that art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs, let me see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely or beautiful. And then in the eighth chapter, right at the end of the book, right before the book closes, it's the voice of the Lord to us, and we should take it that way. He's saying, Thou that dwellest in the gardens, the companions hearken to thy voice, cause me to hear it. And so, uh, <clears throat> you know, just can you imagine being in a relationship, those that are married, where you didn't converse with one another? Even if you let it one day go by where you didn't communicate. Um, you know, he longs to hear us just as uh, we should in, in a relationship. And maybe it's not a husband and wife relationship, but maybe it's a relationship with a close friend. And that friend feels it if perhaps for some reason you haven't communicated. Uh, we, we see that in friendships, don't we? We see that in marriage relationships, the, the vitalness of communication. Well, have we ever thought of it that way in connection with our relationship with our Father and with his Son, the Lord Jesus, that they delight to hear from us? <clears throat> we also, in prayer, we express faith. We express faith that God is, is hearing us. We have a beautiful verse in Isaiah, Isaiah 59 and verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. Can you imagine trying to pray if you felt in your heart that no one heard you? And maybe sometimes in discouragement, we do feel that way, that the heaven is shut up to us. But we know that that's not true. We know that our God always hears us. His ear is not heavy that it cannot hear. And so <clears throat> really, we express faith by praying. We also, when we ask, we ask in faith, don't we? And uh, we know that um, as we have in, in Hebrews, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. <clears throat> For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that is, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How do we diligently seek God? Well, certainly one avenue is through prayer. And so we express faith by praying. We also express dependence. When we think of prayer, we think of dependence, dependence upon God. We realize that we're but flesh and that there are many things that are out of our control. And uh, so we turn to our God in dependence. <clears throat> um, we have in John's gospel, chapter 15, verse 5, the Lord says, I am the vine. Um, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And then it says, for without me, ye can do nothing. So <clears throat> we need to realize that, don't we, that prayer is essential in our lives because Without God, we really can do nothing. We don't have strength to walk to his glory, his honor and glory without his help. 
So we express dependence. <clears throat> Prayer also expresses our needs. We can express our needs and the burdens of our heart. What a privilege that is. We also can seek wisdom. We can seek strength, help, direction from above for our pathway. Like I said, we, we don't know sometimes the way we should go. We can seek strength and help and guidance for that. So <clears throat> what a beautiful thing it is. Prayer is <clears throat> the privilege and right of every child of God. That's wonderful to think about. You and I <clears throat> have the privilege and the right to come into God's presence. Why is that so? Why do we have that access into his presence? It's all because of the finished work of the Lord Jesus on Calvary's cross. When he laid down his life, he shed his precious blood. He rose from the dead. He ascended back to glory, He's seated there now in heaven. And we have the right and the privilege to be able to come into his presence. That's what Hebrews 10 <clears throat> verses 19 and 20 tell us. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. So <clears throat> what a wonderful thing it is to have that right. Do we avail ourselves of, of that? Do we look at it as not only a right, but a privilege? What a privilege it is. And he wants us to come. I thought of prayer as being the lifeline in our lives. It's, it's just like water and food for our bodies. We need prayer. Um, <clears throat> I think of a diver, a deep sea diver, that is so dependent on that line that's bringing him oxygen. And, you know, I'm sure that if you were in that position of doing that type of work, you would be always conscious of that line that is keeping you alive, that is giving you a supply of something that your body needs to sustain life. You and I as believers need prayer to sustain our spiritual life. Without it, we're going to wilt. No, we won't lose our salvation if we've truly put our trust in the Lord, we'll never lose our salvation. But we're going to wilt as believers and we're not going to be able to function <clears throat> for him. We're not going to be vessels sanctified and meet for the master's use. <clears throat> so we need that, don't we? We're not going to need prayer in this sense in the glory. It's for this scene. It's for now. And what a wonderful resource the Lord has given us. Another resource he gave us that he speaks of in the 14th and 15th and 16th chapters of John is the Holy Spirit. And so we know that unique to this dispensation that you and I live in, this dispensation of the grace of God, we have the Spirit of God that has come down. And he's not only uh, joined all the believers together into one body by the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but he also is indwelling each one of us. We have that in uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and other places too. <clears throat> but the Spirit of God is very much a function in this whole subject of prayer. Without the Spirit of God, we would, we would be at a loss. We would flounder. So it says in Romans 8, 26, and we'll probably refer to this verse a number of times. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, <clears throat> for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. And then um, in Ephesians 6 and verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And Jude 1 and verse 20, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And then one more verse in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 15. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing 
with the understanding also. And so uh, <clears throat> just in, I would encourage us to realize the immense privilege we have to come into the presence of God. And <clears throat> we don't come on our own, but the Holy Spirit helps us. And he gives us strength. He takes our groanings and so on, and he translates them, we might say, into the language of heaven. And God receives it as incense for his honor and glory. Well, I've just enjoyed these few things. There's more that could be said. Um, I know we've referred to a number of scriptures. Uh, one of the things that uh, Dave and I talked about briefly is that it would be nice to be able to um, put something into a format that we could extend to you. So uh, we'll look on, we'll work, work on that, look to the Lord for help in that, whether it's a like a PowerPoint or whatever it might be. Uh, I think that might be helpful to um, give you some of these scriptures that we've captured and something that you can then add to yourselves. But with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Dave, who's going to uh, kind of give a little outline of, of the various forms that prayer can take and what we, we hope to, with the Lord's help, cover in these talks that we, we have together. So go ahead, Dave. Well, thank you, John. That's uh, very helpful for us. I appreciated what you said at the beginning and how um, uh, the Lord desires our, our, our fellowship. Um, it, it's interesting. I have, um, I have two little granddaughters that are very active. Um, and they, they come over here and they, uh, they run the socks off their grandma and grandpa. And uh, as I say, they're very active and we, we, we have um, a great time with them. But, but some, of the, some of the most precious times I have with them are times when they come over and they sit on the couch. They might have a doll in their hands and they're not saying anything. And they just sit down beside me and they just put their head up against me. They're not asleep. They're just enjoying being with me. And, and, and that, that's what the Lord desires for us. And we have the tendency to look at prayer so much from our standpoint without realizing how much, as you brought out before us, uh, you, you've been bringing out that incense, John, in, in such a nice way, just how I love just to sit there and the warmth of these two little bodies leaning up against their grandpa and they're not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. We're just enjoying each other's company. And that's the desire. You know, I, I believe that's the, the part of the thought of, um, uh, you know, we read of, um, of uh, outstanding features of different people in the word. Uh, when we think of Enoch, what do we think of? Ah, he was the one that walked with God. And I think that's the, I think that's the, the concept that God so appreciated was that Enoch simply wanted to walk with him. He wanted, he wanted to be in his company. And, and we can have um, the attitude and the, um, and the spirit of perhaps uh, using God for a resource, for asking for our, our selfish uh, desires and our wants. And, and that's, that's not really the thought of all. Let, let me just ask this question. And you can answer it to yourself. But when was the last time you prayed and you didn't ask God for something? Just give that some thought. When was the last time you prayed and you didn't ask God for something? You know, if every time my wife communicated with me, she asked for something, I enjoy her asking me for things. I enjoy my children asking me for things. But if that's the only time they ever communicated was they're asking for something, perhaps there would be something that would, that, that would be missing. And I think that there could be the, the, the tendency. And of course, there's, there's as, as we grow in our souls, you know, when a baby's born, um, 
uh, there's an immediate uh, desire and there's an immediate uh, outbreak of dependence. It cries. It wants its its. Uh, it, it has some needs that they have to be fulfilled, and the communication with a baby is 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 much different um, than my communication with my my two little granddaughters. My communication with uh, my children now is much different than when when we were younger, when they were younger. And so you know, as, as we as we progress in our spiritual lives, our our relationship with the Lord changes. So, you know, I get up in the morning and um, give you a, just a little snapshot of what happens in my morning. I get up and I have my time um, alone with the Lord. And then my son, Ron, comes down and, um, and we have a reading together. Um, and we pray together every morning. That's the communication that, I, that, that, that Ron and I have. And it's, it was much different when he was a baby. It was much different when he was um, the age of my granddaughters. Uh, now, much different than even when he was a teenager. But so, so as, we, as, we, as we grow spiritually in our souls, um, that relationship with the Lord, of course, uh, changes. Well, you know, um, I don't want to belittle asking because it's a very, very big part of our prayer life. And the Lord takes it up as uh, very, uh, you know, in numerous, um, numerous places. But I, it's good for us to be able to, and we'll take up the thought of asking um, in another session. Um, there's different ways to ask. There's different things that we can ask for. Um, and we'll, we'll take up that, um, uh, We'll take up that subject at another time, but when we uh, when we consider our prayer life, uh, you know the the enemy watches it pretty closely, and the more that we pray, what it does is it fortifies us against the enemy, so he doesn't like it. He hates it. And if he can get us off the track of that communication with the Lord, um, it's it's very, very much in his favor. And so, you know, um, the enemy is very much the hardest on us when our prayer life is lacking. And... Uh, that's an interesting thing, you know, because I can, I can, I can study the word for a long period of time, but it's it's the enemy is he doesn't like me in the word, but he's he's happier with that than for me to be in continual, constant communion with the Lord, in communication with Him, and uh, you know the enemy really, really. Um, is hindered when we're really serious about our prayer life. So what, what I'd like to do now is just take a look at some of the things that um, John and I want to look at uh, in the next while. And we don't know how long this is going to take. Um, and they don't, these meetings don't have to be back to back, but they're just... Um, um, it is a large subject. Uh, a, we don't want to get bogged down so that, to a point where it's not profitable, but B, we want it to be such that we can enjoy this together and we can, uh, we can have this communication with each other on this subject that we can really benefit from each other. This is not just a situation that John and I are going to take up. We value everybody else's uh, input in this uh, in, the, in the aftermath. Well, there are, there are two aspects of prayer, and for any of it, maybe some of you taking notes. I wanna I wanna just stress this that there are two aspects of prayer that um, are something we're gonna see in each of the topics, and one is our individual prayer life. 
there's our individual prayer life, prayer life um, and, and, and that's, that's really divided up into a couple areas as well. There's our closet prayers where there's nobody else around and we, we, um, we spend the time um, uh, maybe bringing different ones uh, before, the, before the throne of grace. Um, I'll just throw one thing out here. Um, uh, usually I, I um, or often I, I text the ones that are responsible here just to see who's going to have the next meeting. And the reason I do that is because um, I want to pray for them as they have the meeting. I do that sometimes at a conference. If I hear that a brother's going to have the gospel, I'll just um, discreetly just sidle up to them at some point and just spend a minute praying with them. Um, we, we know that there's generally between 25 and 30 people here uh, every week, uh, each Friday and, and each Monday. Um, and we, we know who they are. Um, I pray for everybody that's on the screen beforehand. I have an idea who's going to be there. There, there are different ways we can do it at different times in the day. Um, uh, if you've ever got a text for me, you're probably on my prayer list. Um, the, the, so, so there's, there's our individual um, uh, closet prayers, which can be large. But then there's our, our individual spontaneous prayers, which can be um, two or three seconds. And uh, that individual prayer life is different than the other aspect, which is our collective prayer life. So we have our, our individual prayer life, and then we have our collective prayer life. So when we think of collective prayer, uh, what do we think of? Well, there's a number of different aspects with that too. Sometimes I pray with one other person. That's collective prayer. Sometimes I pray with two or three. We have a common interest. We have something common we, that uh, in, involves each of us, and we get together, and, and we pray about it. Sometimes we, we, uh, sometimes we pray with a group. Um, we, here in Rideau Ferry, prior to this pandemic, we'd always have a prayer for the gospel. Every Lord's Day, we had a gospel meeting. We'd have a prayer meeting, and the brothers all get together, and they, we'd pray for the, the gospel as they went forth. We, there's that kind of group prayer, and it's not just in connection with the gospel. Well, we, we can do that with a number of brothers, or you can do it with a number of sisters together can do that. Um, it's another aspect. Uh, and these are all uh, aspects of collective prayer that are actually outside of the assembly. But then there's the assembly prayer meeting. Very, very important part of our Christian pathway with those that we meet with. And, you know, we might say, um, as I think you brought this up earlier, John, you know, you know why pray? Um, if God is sovereign and God knows what's going to happen, and um, we're not going to change God's mind, what's the point? Uh, why, why bother? I think that's a good aspect for us to, to look at as we're, as we're perhaps considering these, um, these, these meetings together. Well, um, so the, the concept of, of individual prayer and collective prayer we can take those two aspects and we can put them into each of these headings that we're going to look at now, of which there are many. So as I, as I um, mentioned right off the bat, there is the, the subject of asking. And I might mention this, that um, prayer is not a gift. It's not a gift. We, we read of various ones in the word that were especially given to prayer. But we really all have that ability to do that. And so, you know, we, we both in New Testament and Old Testament, we read of those that um, um, were particularly given to prayer. And, and that's wonderful, but it's more uh, as an example to us as opposed to it being a gift that someone particularly has that they can do that I can't. 
that's a, that's a searching thing to me because we really we really all need to be very very involved in this subject so in connection with our with our asking there's um there's there's perhaps our um our crying to the lord um when a given situation i'll just use an example you remember peter um he stepped out of the boat he's walking on the water he starts to sink what does he do does he say well you know it's time to get down on my knees beside my bed and it's time to um to have a discourse with the lord no he cries out lord save me and there is that kind of prayer in our asking that we have in our own lives but then there's the subject of supplication uh another large subject many many examples in the word that we'll see of supplicating and then there's also in connection with asking there's the subject of intercession different than supplication but intercession is also a very very large subject and these are all in connection with asking and so as i started earlier um, asking uh, takes up quite a bit of our of our prayer life but often it's um we can be a bit selfish you know there are things that uh we know the lord doesn't promise to help me get an a on my exams he doesn't promise to uh to help me not to get sick um but there are things that are promises that we can pray about that we need to that we that we know we have the mind of god some things we don't know that we have the mind of god other things we do um either there's a there's a principle and a scripture that tells me I'm, I'm to love my wife and so can i ask the lord to um really help me to love my wife more yeah i can and i, I know i absolutely have his mind absolutely without any question whatsoever there are many many things like that in the word where we know we have the mind of god that we can pray about that it's very helpful if we um if we uh pray about those things so that's in connection with asking well then there's a there, there's there's an, um the next perhaps section that we'll look at is um and there's three different maybe headings uh with this topic it's the concept of thanksgiving um very again a very very large subject the numerous times the apostle as he writes to the saints he, he says to them i thank my god always on your behalf uh the that whole spirit of thanksgiving we 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 do it with our food don't we we thank the lord for the food that's set in front of us um, but but it's a whole subject in itself then alongside of that there is the the subject of, of praise um another um uh, aspect of addressing the lord a little different than thanksgiving um we can praise and then there's the and then there's the uh, perhaps in that in that same group there is the um there's the subject of worship again um uh very important um and i think by some um not understood I had a young man working for me um, a couple of years ago, and he used to leave. Um, he used to leave every um, Thursday afternoon. He used to leave work early, and the reason he'd leave early because he um, he would leave early on Thursday afternoons because he he said he had to go to a um, uh, a practice worship service, and you know uh, he he really didn't have the the concept of what of what worship was um you know worship is is something um sometimes we don't even have anything to say at all and our hearts are just filled with worship well that's a whole concept that we'll we'll perhaps look at thanksgiving praise and worship and then there's another another a topic that we could look at and it's in connection with um this happens uh when we're first saved we confess our sins and he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins so there's confession 
and there's forgiveness. But it's not just in connection with our salvation, is it? That happens throughout our life as well. And it happens in connection with others. We perhaps have to ask the Lord to help us to confess to somebody else. And perhaps we have to ask the Lord to help them to be able to be in a spirit where they can receive it so that they can forgive us. That whole, that whole subject of, of confession, forgiveness. And we see numerous places, don't we, in the Old Testament and the New Testament that take up that subject. Well, then there's another subject. And the Lord brings this up um, numerous times in the Gospels. And it's the subject of prayer and fasting. And that's a good thing for us to look at. Uh, there are many different aspects of prayer and fasting that we can look at and trust that we will. And trust that that would be, um, be a, a helpful time um, for us to look at that. Well, then there's, um, there's some things on the Lord's side that really affect our prayer life. Um, John and I were speaking about this. There's, um, there's, um, there's the hindrances to our prayers, perhaps that we can, we can uh, look at. Um, but I was thinking of, um, there's a subject which um, has to do with the Lord's high priestly service on our behalf and also his advocacy. And that's a subject in itself, which is a rather large subject um, you remember Moses um, when Amalek, and this is um, way back in, what would it be, 15, I guess, 15 or 17 of Exodus, where he, uh, Amalek came and uh, Moses' hands were, were held up. And uh, when, his hands, when his hand came down, Amalek prevailed. When his hands were held up, then the people of God prevailed. A real, a real picture of uh, the Lord's uh, advocacy and his high priestly service and that's a, another subject that um, we trust to be able to um, to to look at well um, I thought maybe just at the end here we could turn to a scripture and there's going to be many that we do look at in the succeeding time but let's just turn to Colossians where we can learn from someone who um, who had an active prayer life the book of Colossians, and if we could turn to the fourth chapter. The, the more we look at this subject, the more we come up with people that were prayer warriors in the word. Um, and I dare say that I'm looking at an audience that uh, are characterized by some of those things, and I'm thankful. I'm, I'm thankful, you know, for um, every one of you that pray for me. I'm so thankful. You know, the Apostle, the Apostle Paul said, um, brethren, pray for us. You know, you think, uh, would, would, would he need prayer? Yeah, yeah, really. You know, when you think of the Apostle Paul's life, you think of some of the things that he went through, the shipwrecks. Think of him beaten, being beaten by rods a number of times. And people died of that. If they didn't die from the beating, they died from the infection that set in when they were in prison. Think of the scourgings he went through. Numerous scourgings. Again, people died from that. And if... Again, if they didn't die from the scourge, they died from the infection that set in. So, you know, as the, as the apostle was going through, you know, if the apostle Paul was to take his shirt off, they would have been a horrific mess to look at. The scars of what he endured for the name of Christ. And how the enemy would have worked on him to just throw the towel in and give up. And so when he said, brethren, pray for us. He really needed the prayers. And you know, dear ones, we really desperately need each other's prayers. We really do. I desperately need your prayers on a daily basis. And if we, if we, can, if we can actively pray one for another, it's such a help one for another. Well, let's look at this dear... Um, this dear child of God in Colossians chapter 4. 
as the apostle closes this wonderful book, um, he, he comes to um, verse 12. And this is a salutation of um, the apostle to the Colossians and also to Epip uh, from Epaphras. And so Colossians 4 and 12, we read, Epaphras, who is one of you? A servant of Christ saluted you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Wouldn't that have been wonderful to get a letter like this to the saints in Colossae sitting there, having this letter read to them and knowing that there was this brother that was laboring fervently for them in prayer. I love that. I covet that in my own soul. And we, we all have the ability to do such a thing. May the Lord give us the grace to fervently pray one for another and that our prayer life as we go through this subject, we would be serious about it. To realize how serious the Lord is in his desire to have our company. His desire to have our communication. And his desire to be able to be a help one to another as we pray one for another. Well.